Breakfast Club. Pat his shoulders and Golden Girls. The Terminator. I'll be back. To Ferris Bueller. Take a trip back to the future. That's the power of love. Ron Stevens. Saturday afternoons at 2 for two totally awesome hours of the decade of Madonna. Michael Jackson. And Whitney. Essential babies. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. This is Dennis Pitchenbarger from Sticker Shock, and if you're not listening to Motormouth Radio, boy, you are lost in the smoke of the burnout. Make sure and tune in each and every week because these guys are exactly what you want to hear. Real car guys, real talk every single weekend. All right, thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Stephen Tyler and Aerosmith. Uncle Salty, one of my favorites. Yeah, really. You you come up with wow. Talk about toys in the attic. Or yeah, toys in the wherever. Yeah, you know, toys in the hard drive. Cause music, us. We got a flashy thing on the thing. So let's go back to the phones and say hi. You're on the motor mouths. Hey, how you doing? This is Mikey from LT. How you doing? Hey, hey Mike, Mike. How are you? I want to comment on that guy about the you know the failing lifters on the small block Chevys and the cams. Yeah. The early small block, small journal, and partially up until 1972 on the large journal small blocks. Right. At the parting line, General Motors put a slight, slight microscopic pinhole at the parting line of the connecting rod. And on the upstroke, it would hydraulic oil to the bottom of the camshaft. When they went to the smog motors, uh, what they did was they eliminated that parting line because they went from a, a, a oil pump that put out... 20 to 25 pounds at idle to 15, 15 to 10 in an effort to get more horsepower out of the smog motors, which were probably down to about 235 horses at that point. Yeah, and they that's were the reason why the camshafts were wiping out. They weren't getting oil. Ah, okay. Oil starvation. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, I've heard it was that. Designed, it, it was designed. It gave a straight shot to the bottom of the, bottom of the camshaft at, uh, when, when, when that connecting rod came up. Okay. It pissed, out, it, it pissed out the extra oil to the bottom of the camshaft. Got it. Yeah, there, there was a couple theories running around with that. I mean, I worked. No, I I know for a fact. I I, I could put you put, put a 327 connector ride next to a late 350 ride. You'll see the difference right away. The hole is not there. Okay, it was designed. Yeah, that's uh, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, the proof is in the sea, and then uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. General Motors went. General Motors they went to a, 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 a oil pump that that put out less psi because they wanted to. You know, they were looking to come into specifications with gas mileage and drag and everything else. And you know, hey, this is the way it went. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. You know, a lot of times that stuff comes down to economics and money. Sometimes it comes down to there's an engineering problem, and that'll get worked out, you know, through subsequent... Um the number one problem why, why camshafts go away besides oiling is that people put hardened lifters on the soft cam. Oh, well, happens. of course. Right, right. That yeah. That's not going to play. Any of those aftermarket lifters you get from Crane and all, and those are all hardened, hardened lifters. They're meant to be used with a hardened cam. Right. Or, you know, and, and or, for, or for a guy who's stupid enough to mix up the lifters, that's another big issue. Well, well yeah, sure. Yeah, you, you can't do that because, like you said, it's it's just instant instant failure. There's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of factors. Half of them are human error. Yeah. And you got a, you got the guy on from Cali Crank today, huh? Well, yeah, that's correct. We're yeah. expecting him right now. That's why we got to get off the phone with you so we can we can accept his call. <laughs> Good yeah. crank. I've been using it for years. But listen, just I'll nominate the idiot to the, the idiot group of the day. By all means. People that ride around with American flags on Japanese cars. There you go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Almost we got to give them something for effort because you never know. But okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the well, books. Well, I look Mike. at Pearl Harbor as a terrorist attack, and I wouldn't buy a car from a terrorist just like I wouldn't buy a car if Osama bin Laden started building cars 20 years from now. You got a point there, Mike. Still You're building, right. He was still building all camels. Right, buddy. Yeah, camel. luck. All right, Mike. All right, Thanks man. a lot, buddy. So long. Take care. All right, that was a good buddy, Mike, from LT. Actually, he wasn't from LT. I was from LT, but that's how he knew me. So <laughs> we kind of swapped. Right. Persona. So hopefully now Heath will give us a buzz, and uh, and we'll talk to him about crankshafts. This company, like I said a few weeks ago, really is is doing some cool stuff. They, I, I've known that name for a long time. Yeah, they, they, 
definitely come out with some great hardcore engine parts. Oh, yeah. You know, so I'm sure he'll have a lot of great stuff to say. Yeah. We'll see. I'll, uh, well, um... Well, in the meantime, he's probably having a cup of coffee, you know, dialing us up on the radio with the internet going, do I really have to talk to these two idiots? Well, yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if we, if we got that now. Let's go back to the phones and say, hi, you're on with the motor mouths. Hello, Yo. you're on with the motor mouths. Yes. I can hear you being quiet. Yes, and the button is pushed. Yeah. That didn't work. All right, we'll have to try it again. Wow. It doesn't always work the first time. You know what? You didn't turn on the sign language uh, translator, did you? No, I did not. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm sitting here in front of the microphone making sign language and nothing's happening. And nothing's happening. It's funny how that happens, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. you know. We got we got to talk to the uh, the people in charge about getting that up to up to speed yeah. there. I was going to say, you know, Mike was mentioning about the crank thing. He is happens to be very first hand knowledgeable in that stuff. So he's one of the guys who you don't just dismiss it as being like. Oh, I read no. an article about that. Yeah, you know, he he knows. Right. No. So. Listen, we were just talking about being in 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 the trenches, boots on the ground type of yeah. That, right. He he's that type of guy, you know, and. Uh, no, it's funny. It's funny how that stuff works because when I was a Chevy, I had heard the hardening thing. So, yeah. let's go back. Let's try it again. We'll push the button and say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Hi, this is Heath Norton from Cali's. How are you? Hey. Heath, how are you? You're on Ray and Joe, and we are anxious to talk to you about all the stuff you guys are doing. So, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Well, my name's Heath Norton, and. Uh I work at Cali's Performance Products and Energy Manufacturing, and we uh, manufacture a lot of different items. But it's germane to this uh, radio uh, uh, show, we make at Cali's we make crankshafts, connecting rods, and camshafts for uh, anything that wants to go fast. Yeah, all right. And also at Energy Manufacturing, we we have make bevel blocks, cylinder heads, and intake manifolds, and a bunch of other little uh, you know nuts and bolts and you know smaller accessories to support high end drag racing. Excellent, and I have to say, Heath, yeah, we did uh, we touched uh, we got to meet you on the Thursday night plane and traffic show with Lou Santiago a few weeks ago, and that's mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. you know we cross promote a lot. We want to thank you for the uh, for the great gifts. The you swag, sent us. oh yeah, yeah, that stuff's great, man. <clears throat> thank you. I've been using mine. My daughter was trying to confiscate uh, some of it, and I said, no, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I just got my little yeah, usually came happen. Up and <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, we did learn a lot on Thursday night uh, a few weeks ago, but uh, we, you know, we got, we're going to do it all over again. Because I was very no impressed. Uh, you're actually, I, I, I found out you guys are actually called uh, Technoma Industries. Is that well, that's one of our companies. Okay. Our, uh, our, you know, each company operates independently, and Technoma has its own place. It's... Uh, Sort of a behind the scenes company of ours, but really the uh, the main companies are uh, Cali's Performance Products and Energy Manufacturing. Uh, got it. Cali's is based in Fostoria, Ohio, and Energy is in Fremont, Ohio. Okay, I got it, got it. So, how long has Cali's been in business? Because we all know the name, we've used the stuff, but how long has the, has the company been around? Well, as Cali's um, from 1989. And, okay. But for about 10 years before that, we were making crankshafts. Uh, for jo- like Lunati, right? Ah, okay. We, we made all. I mean, we did a lot of the crankshafts for Lunati for Joe Lunati. My dad, my father, and Joe Lunati were buddies, and they worked together a lot. And my uh, my dad made a lot of cranks for him. Okay, so you guys have some pretty impressive manufacturing facilities, as I understand. We have a lot of equipment. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's sort of an understatement, but it's uh, you know, and you know, I, I got to tell you the. The uh, what's more important than the equipment is our manpower and our, our team. It's our team. All of our players are just uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, the, for the engineering, production, quality control. I mean, everybody does a part. Everybody's a part of this. You know, and it really, you know, from the from, from you know across the board, the entire team plays a tremendously important role in that and everything we do to get product out the door. Well, sure. That's how that's how well oiled machine works because it's it's a comprehensive. Uh, melding of of talent and all, and we know you know we talk about that all the time. So, and, and you guys, of course, are very well known in the industry. What are some of your hot, hottest selling parts these days? Well, right now, um, our billet cranks are really selling well. We're coming out with we have a eight counterweighted forged LS crank that's doing exceptionally well right now. Um, for it's a, it's a Magnum. Uh, mm-hmm. Kelly's Magnum A counterweight is doing very well. Um, our GTR uh, billet cranks doing well. Um, 
Yeah, we're really we're we're more we're spreading out into more areas than just V8 because the the racing industry is changing and it's getting more diverse and and broad, which I love. I think it's fantastic because yeah. you know not everybody can race the same things, and you know the, it, you got to get people in here. And the more diversity you have, the healthier this this business is. I mean, really, probably our our, our newest component to date. Is our enforcer uh, ultra I beams? Oh, I didn't and realize they, they, they are. They're uh, there's really there. There are normal ultras with a little bit more magic in them, and they 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 really are built for the like the boosted applications. They have they're, they're stronger. They have more durability to to live in those violent environments. Yeah, yeah, like Ohio. Exactly. <laughs> violent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if, if you, you know, uh, the weather is violent here. It is. It's terrible. Know. Yeah. We. Louis Lee's always talking about uh, Ohio, his part of the town, and uh, so I, I couldn't. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I mean, we're in New York, so come on. It, yeah, we we share the same. The same yeah, kind you of do. Problems. Uh, so you, do. You, you get those hurricanes though. We don't get those. Thank God. Oh yeah, absolutely. Lay out for us, Keith. I know that you guys have a few different levels of of. Um, I, I, I looked the product lines? Yeah, the product lines. Sure. And, and, you know, people don't always understand what they are. So if you could uh, describe that for us, that would be great. At Cali's, we have two main brands. And the, the first brand, uh, I'll say our premier brand is Cali's. And if, if it's branded Cali's, it's 100% made in Ohio. It's, the material is, you know, high-quality steel. It is machine in Ohio. They, all, all the heat treats done in the house at our, our facility in Foster, Ohio. It is our our top of the line products. Within the Cali's brand, we have the Ultra line, which is our our premier flagship lines. And then you and those are billet cranks, and then they are um, you, I beams. And we have some H beams also for some NA applications. And then. Below that, we have our forge crank line, which it's, I hate to say it's below, but it's, it's just it's a different right. application. Right, right, right. Um, and it's really that's that's always been our you know our we our, our bread and butter, and it's really a fantastic product, um, and we we do a lot to really enhance that. And those are all the machining, all the heat treatment, everything's done at our facility in Ohio. And those are all made from forgings. Right, right. the. And then, separate from Cali's, um, we have what's called CompStar. Mm-hmm. And unlike a lot of people who tend to use one brand, we like to differentiate what it is based upon application and, and origin, for that matter. Our CompStar line is a, the line we engineer, we source offshore, and we bring it in for the value-driven customer. But the difference between us and anybody else is that Every piece of Comstar gets touched at our facility. They get inspected. They get mech particle. They get finished. All of our Comstar rods get all the honing and fasteners put in in Faustoria, Ohio, and the, the all the cranks get finished, polished, and finished balance or whatever needs done. All the finishing work's done here in Ohio, mm-hmm. and it's really the difference between us and a lot of other guys selling cranks. I mean. I, I, I would ask anybody out there who's not using our cranks, call whoever you're using and ask the pictures of where they inspect their cranks, where they do yeah. the finishing, because I guarantee they're not going to have many of them. You'll see straw or sand. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, exactly. that, you know, and, and I have to say, I'm glad that you went there right right in this explanation, because that's what really impressed me on the Thursday night show. Joe and I mm-hmm. both have backgrounds in, in manufacturing and, and distribution and all, and we know how you can get things done the right way and the wrong way, and you guys are certainly doing it the right way. And well, that's what we, we, you know, we often argue internally. Are, are we? Are we? Does the customer appreciate it? And does the customer really value the time we put into, um, you know, fit, sizing the cranks to what you know we find is appropriate, and so you have consistency and you know repeatability. Um, and we've just sort of taken the high road on this and say, you know, this is how we're going to do business, and we, we, we probably will sell less parts, and we'll probably um, not have as much revenue as a lot of the other big brands out there, but that's okay, you know.